Today's Stripe Show podcast is brought to you by About Golf Simulators. And we're back, Stripe Show podcast on a Monday. I'm your host, Travis Fulton. Thank you for making us part of your day. Uh, if you are watching right now on YouTube at Travis Fulton Golf, you will see me in my studio uh, right now with Tiger Woods in the backdrop playing. I wish he was live, but David Ledbetter's on his way. He'll be live here in the studio momentarily, but this is Tiger Swing that he posted uh, last week. I want to take a peek at that here for a second, give you some of my thoughts on uh, what I'm seeing with Tiger Swing and then also what's coming up, not only on today's podcast, uh, but also the rest of the week. Big week uh, for the Stripe Show. Thank you for being here. Uh, really good numbers uh, last week. Operation Baby Draw, that was a big hit. Uh, for those that tuned into that last week, uh, if you didn't, go back, take a listen. I, I took you through Operation Baby Draw in basically my training program that's online at TravisFultonGolf.com. And really just kind of how I see it in, in building this draw pattern from taking care of the club face to the swing shape and how the club shaft works, the club head the body and just kind of layering it in piece by piece to where you get to a point where you can hit it from the inside, face slightly closed and hit a little baby draw. And I think more specifically than that is when you get to the end is how the iron swing is different than the driver swing. So thank you for those that purchased the program. I really appreciate it. Some of you uh, went ahead and did the uh, bundle, which is awesome. Uh, there's operation drip fade in there. There's total driving, there's strokes gain short game. I did a little 150 yards on in in the studio. So some interesting things there to kind of piece through uh, as you approach the fall slash winter month. Everybody at some point needs to learn how to draw the ball. Now, someone that knows how to draw it and that's been through that is Tiger Woods. He's a player that doesn't want to overdraw it. All good players have went through a period where they've overdrawn it. They've hit that big push hook and then they try to find that middle ground and hit that little fade. So they really can find neutral but be able to work it with a little draw or a little fade. That's a very high caliber player. Gonna get to Tiger Swing here uh, in a second. Today's podcast, I'm going to share with you uh, an interview that I did with Matt Gogol, uh, who is on PJ Tour Champions now and getting some status. Matt uh, was a former Golf Channel guy that we, I, I knew a little bit. Uh, also, just a, a great uh, broadcaster on CBS Sports. He was a part of that team for a long time. After taking a step away from his playing career, Matt was a very good player. I think he's second on the all-time wins list when it comes to uh, – the Corn Ferry Tour. At the time, it was the Nike Tour. And then he got into the professional ranks, had one win at Pebble Beach, but then went into, uh, made that transition to uh, on course and walking with the players. A terrific mind, very thoughtful, understands the game, not only on the golf course, but off. I think he can look at it objectively as well and really articulate that. So it was great to catch up with Matt. I'm going to air you the conversation that I had with Matt at Furick and Friends over the weekend. Uh, it was in town here. Brett Quigley got the win. Um, and I sat down with Matt at the Vice Star Patriots Outpost, which is a fantastic tent that sits out there uh, on uh, 16 and 17. It was really cool to see all the veterans, active military, that were rolling through uh, the Patriots Outpost that's put on by Vice Star. And of course, we're doing um, our hashtag honor your hero again with Vice Star, something we did last year. We got a great response for that. Go to my website. Click on Partners and click on Vicer. You'll see where you can nominate your hero. It can be an active military, can be a veteran. This is really important to me and something that I'm, I'm, I'm really honored to do with Vicer. Hashtag honor your hero. I'll be reading some of those on air as well. They got all kinds of really cool prizes and things they're going to be giving the military. So please go do that and nominate that special person. It's out there over the weekend with Matt Gogol. I'm going to share you that uh, conversation that I had with him. He had some interesting things to say now uh, about Steve Stricker in particularly as it pertains to the Ryder Cup. So I hope you give that a listen. All right, let's get the Tiger swing here. I know I've got it up in the simulator. It's not great video quality that came across. But I did make the statement that, look, this is my least favorite swing of Tiger. All right, and, and, and it's not a, it's, I'm not being critical. I'm not. 
I am not criticizing Tiger Woods' swing. I'm just making the statement that after all of these comebacks that we've seen, and all of, this, all of these golf swings, let's face it, that we've seen from Tiger Woods over the years, this is my least favorite. Now, full context, this is, he's hitting a wedge. This is a little, you know, three quarter wedge shot. So you can't like take away, I guess, everything from just a little short wedge shot. But I've seen Tiger Woods hit enough shots. I look at so many swing videos, as you know, and share my thoughts with him. Oftentimes I'm conversing with the coach itself. But watching Tiger and understanding all of the patterns that he has, I mean, to me, when I look at it, it kind of reminds me of my own swing, to be quite honest with you, which is not a compliment uh, whatsoever. But he's definitely hunched down, right? I mean, you can see him kind of hunched down. I don't know if he's protecting his leg or his back or his knee or what have it. But it's not exactly the most athletic set of position um, that you've ever seen. The thing that really just stands out to me is that when he takes it back, and you'll notice to the top, it's a three-quarter swing, but that shaft just gets very vertical and very short. You can just tell the spine is kind of staying down in flexion. There's not this you know, really healthy turn where the spine's opening up, the right hip's opening up, and he's you know, really kind of lengthening out a little bit, an aggressive type of turn. Again, three-quarter in nature. But I'm not sure I've seen Tiger get to a position where his hands, and you look at it here, his hands get to the right shoulder and that shaft is very vertical. I mean, Tiger's always been a player who has width out here and then that shaft is rotating to this position. Now it's rotated to different angles, but I haven't seen where it's just kind of here in vertical, all right? Now, I'm not gonna label it that it's starting to look like the old man swing, but it's certainly not as dynamic, it's not as athletic that we've seen from Tiger Woods in the past, and understandably so on what this guy has went through with his body, and his back, and his knee, and his leg, et cetera, et cetera. So, look, if anybody can come back and be competitive again, it's Tiger Woods, and I hope he does, and I hope that he continues to get healthy, I hope the leg continues to get stronger, and he can definitely shift his weight a little bit. I hope all of those things. But when you look at comebacks and you look at Tiger Swing and you look at him and you compare him, and that's just something that I like to do and share my opinion, not my favorite. All right. So let's hope Tiger continues on the, on the track to getting healthy, getting stronger, and we start seeing resemblance of that Tiger Wood Swing that has been so, so productive over the years. All right, just a few thoughts there on Tiger Wood Swing. We've got a really good week this week coming up. Keith Stewart is live. Uh, from Las Vegas next week, Lexi Thompson is in the field. So we'll give you all of our best bets there. How about Ben Griffin? I got you into a top 20 this week, good odds. I also had him to win. <sighs> ah, bogeyed the last hole to get into that playoff and lose, but I, that's, I'm over it. Don't worry about it, I'm over it. Give you our best bets uh, net, or tomorrow at the Shriners, Keith Stewart live from Las Vegas, hopefully staying out of trouble. Wednesday, I'm gonna share with you this podcast that we're shooting today in the studio. We're gonna have a live audience. David Ledbetter will be here, one of the all-time greats, a friend of mine. He is driving up to spend the day with me here. How cool is that? Dream come true, love David Ledbetter, love his team. What a career that he's had. We're gonna be talking about a lot of things, but in particularly the backswing, and really just kind of going through some of the things that happen in the backswing. He's got his device called the straightaway. Uh, more information on this on Wednesday's pod. If it's something you've been looking to get, go ahead and wait until Wednesday's pod. Really cool tool that really gets the club started back properly. I'm very big on the very first move of the backswing. We had a conversation this morning as he was driving up there and he was sharing some really interesting stories about Mo Norman and the times that he got to talk golf swing with him um, that we'll be talking about as well. So you'll see the entire podcast with David Ledbetter on Wednesday, and then I'm working on Chris Como, one of uh, today's great young teachers uh, for Thursday as well. So a great week, we're gonna be talking instruction, we're gonna be looking at more video. Tiger's on his way back. That makes me excited that he's swinging. I just hope it starts to get a little more dynamic than what we're, okay, anyway, enough with that. All right. Take you out to Farrakhan, friends. Good conversation here 
with a very bright mind from the Vice Star Patriot Outpost with Matt Gogol. Hack Motion is an innovative wrist analysis sensor and app that measures players' wrist and hand movement in the golf swing. With audio feedback and different drill modes, it offers the capability to improve players' wrist mechanics in the golf swing to provide a better club face control and impact position. Hack Motion can be used for both full swing and putting to cover all golf shots. Hack Motion is used by some of the top golf coaches today around the world. Visit hackmotion.com. Right here, Vice Star Credit Union. Uh, Patriot Outpost and Mr. Matt Gogol, thanks for joining us. Yeah, here. you bet. Good round today. You're playing well. Four under. Yeah. Inside four, the top twenty. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, golfers are never happy, right? Yeah. Uh, I've left a couple shots the first day, and at least three shots out there today, even with some under par scores. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm 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 pleased with the way I'm playing, uh, mm-hmm. but but you know, I always like to be a couple more under, and I think. Uh, I'm gonna have to shoot really low tomorrow. Yeah. Everything's gonna have to go my way tomorrow. It's funny, I was I was walking up the fairway and there's Ernie Els standing in the middle of the fairway and he's going like this. I'm like, yeah. I'm like that's Ernie Els. Yeah. Standing in the middle of the fairway, looking at his wrists and his club, and he like even looked back to his face. It just never ends. I mean, this is a guy that one of the best players of our of our time. That's and right. he's still just out there tinkering and grinding and trying to find it. Never ends, does it? Never ends. Uh, you're always trying to make sure, I mean, we've all hit a million golf balls by this yeah. point in our lives, right? Uh, Ernie's probably 54, I'm 52. Mm-hmm. I don't, excuse me, I don't even hit balls much after the round yeah. just to save energy because yeah. nothing's really going to change. Mm-hmm. But you're always thinking, you know, the last couple weeks for me, I, I'm, I'm, I've made a little bit of a grip change. Okay. Uh, strengthened my left hand a little bit and I'm just controlling the club base at impact. Ernie's trying to check positions if he's yeah. out in the fairway, just trying to make sure he he's working on something. We're always working on something. So you may so you go stronger left hand, which is gonna get the face a little bit more closed, effectively usually. But it, and then do you just can. feel like you can just do you feel like you just can turn and hit it and not manipulate it as much? That's probably the best way to describe it. Okay. So when I was a junior golfer okay. and we all had heavy equipment and you know, dating ourselves here, but persimmon woods and heavy equipment. Junior, junior golfers are nothing like they are today. Mm-hmm. My son's 19 years old, but he started with those clubs that stack as you get taller. Yep. Mm-hmm. They get US longer kids, and heavier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. U.S. kids. Yeah. So they learn how to swing the club fast at a young age. And it matriculates up to the kids that are on the tour that are 24 that have 190 mile an hour ball speed and right. 125 plus club head speed. Mm-hmm. We never had that. A big guy could hit the ball long, but really it was all about timing. You look at the best players in, in my generation or just ahead of me, and, and even go from like Tom Watson, Curtis Strange, Ben Crenshaw, mm-hmm. and then go to my generation. It wasn't until Tiger Woods. Freddie Couples hit it long, Davis Love hit it yeah. long. There are a few. But, but, but really the, the golfer body was 5'9", yeah. 5'10", five, five, and, and now the athletes in it, so there's a lot more speed in it. But if, if you get back to when you say a stronger grip, I had a strong grip, not Azinger strong, yeah. but I was stronger as a junior golfer and then it got more neutral as yeah. I got older. But if you look at like Zach Johnson, who yeah. still plays with a really, Very really strong. strong grip, you're effectively, if this is if the viewer's watching yeah. this, uh, mm-hmm. if you got a strong left grip, you're effectively already released at impact. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to rotate through your hands yeah. as much. So, for me to strengthen my left hand just a little bit, it's, yeah, not, yeah, right. it's not much. Yep. I'm not releasing the club yeah. head with my hands as much. I'm just turning. Yeah, it doesn't take much though at your level. I mean, if you just tweak, I mean, you can sense, okay, I gotta be a little different at the bottom, mm-hmm. right? To just that little subtle change, which for most most people that are listening, you know, making the grip a little stronger, getting the face a little more, you know, a little more shut, it's gonna help them swing a little more from the inside, et cetera, et cetera. For you, a better player, it's just getting the face more prepared where you don't have to, you know, manipulate Manipulated it. impact. Right, yeah. yeah. I wanna go back to what you said about Phil and, and Ernie and even like Phil, like those guys, they weren't necessarily trying to swing as hard as they can, they just kinda of naturally had speed. Where in today's mm-hmm. era, do you find, Matt, that like these guys are, like in, I teach a lot, I mean you have kids trying to swing hard immediately, they do speed training. They're, That's right. They're bigger athletes. That's right. They're stronger. That's right. 
And so then it's like, okay, I've got my ball speed up. Now I got to figure out how to, you know, make it go straight. That wasn't that wasn't how it was in, in your day, was it? No, not so much because you just no one really. I mean, two hundred on the tour in the eighties, two hundred eighty-five yards was the longest driver on the tour. Right. Two hundred eighty-five yards, you're not going to be on the tour yeah. in this era. <laughs> but uh, it, it's it's. I would say at this, any junior golf or anybody, boys, girls, mm -hmm. swing at it hard yeah. within reason. Swing your natural swing, yeah. and then you'll figure out straight as you get older. Yeah. You missed media. You were great. I mean, I, uh, I, I, I I enjoyed the people I worked with. We yeah. had a really great team. Yeah, a lot of fun. And, yeah, uh, but it was. I get Costas on once in a while. Oh, do you? Yeah, we kick it around, yeah. and, and he, you know, he usually irons me out on a couple things that I said on, you know, Twitter or whatever it's called these days. Because he's and never then, wrong. No, I mean he's. Yeah, because you know, Peter Costas you know, is never wrong. <laughs> I texted him. I texted him on uh, right after the Ryder Cup, and I said, "Hey." You want to kick it around? He's like, I'm playing in a tournament on uh, Monday. I said, yeah, go play. Don't worry about me. Yeah. You know? So he, he's starting to play a little bit more golf, which I think uh, he enjoys. But, you know, I, I worked at Golf Channel for a little bit, morning drive, all that, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, when you, when you, when you work in that, in that energy from live TV, you know, and you work with good people, you miss it. You know, and it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a different kind of energy that you get. And, and you did it for so many years and so well at CBS Sports. Like, hey, before you go, I got to ask you. Ryder Cup. What happened? I mean, what does, or do, well, it's the same story, right? They made more putts than okay. we did the first yeah. two days. And team golf's a different dynamic. We don't play. They don't play it that much, too. It's, yeah. it, it's not like the Europeans are always playing team golf. Yeah. And camaraderie, we have camaraderie. Yeah. I mean, those guys are all buddies. And, and you know, there's different personalities in a team, yeah. both Europe and USA. I think the, uh, if, if, if I had to look back and I had a voice, which I didn't, I'll make it clear. <laughs> I would say this, I would say two stories real quick. When Trevor Umelman was captain of the President's yep. Cup team, and I was thinking about coming out to play the Champions Tour, but I, okay. I anyway, we're having dinner one night because we're doing TV, we're doing some event. I said, let me ask you a question. If, if Retief or Ernie wins like four Champions Tour events in a row, yeah. would you consider, because I know where you're going with this, yeah, I would. And to me, when I was doing TV and only focused on the PGA Tour, I thought, you know, the Champions Tour old guys are, you know, some of them can still play, but you know, they're, they're out there just kind of kicking mm -hmm. her. I'm blown away how competitive it is. Yeah. I mean, I'm playing well and I'm not even sniffing the lead uh, this week. Mm -hmm. uh, you gotta play great. Yeah. These guys, the top 40 guys are dialed in. Mm -hmm. To my point that Steve Stricker's played 15 events, he's won six, mm -hmm. he's finished second five times. And all 15, he's been in the top 10. Yeah. You're playing world-class golf. Yep. And in team competition, as straight as he hits it, as many greens as he hit, and as how well he putts and how well he wedges, he would have been a great captain's pick. Interesting. He would have been, I think, a great asset to that team has not only leadership, but he's playing so well. He's If you ask Steve, I bet he'd say he's probably playing the best golf of his life. Really? Yeah. Attention golfers, if you're looking to upgrade your game with a set of high-quality clubs that are blazing fast, beyond forgiving, and beautifully made, check out the all-new PXG Gen 6 Golf Clubs. Not only are they easy to hit, they deliver outstanding distance and incredible accuracy, lowering your scores and bringing you more fun on the golf course. What more could you want? Schedule your Gen 6 fitting today at pxg.com or by calling 844-PLAY-PXG. Yes, wow. even at 56 or 55. For Steve oh, Stricker. Well, look at yeah. look at the categories. Yeah. I mean, he's one in putting, yeah. he's one in scrambling. I think he's second in greens and regulation. He's oh. one in fairways hit. He's doing so many great things. It's just that mm -hmm. the focus should be on the young guys and it is. But Steve Stricker would have been an asset last wow. week. Is by the way, on right here in par 3. He was over there and got it up and down. On a downhill. That, I mean, that's strip that, right that's there. That's how yeah. good it is. Yeah. And again, 80% of the matches are, are team yeah. format. Yeah. I think he would have been a great teammate. But final question: Is is there? All right. I've I've given I've given Luke a lot of credit. Look, Donald. Am I am I is is the captain getting too much credit after the Ryder Cup? And I know Zach's taking a little bit of a beating after the Ryder Cup. Is he getting too much of? Is it? Are we putting too much into the captain 
in what they do. And I know they work hard. I know I get it. Like it's this is a job. I mean, they're they're it just goes on for. There's a reason why they yeah. pick it, and they have a couple of years, yeah. right? Right. So I don't discount that, but I know that the players, and I've been around this game long enough, I know that the magic is made by the player. The player hits the shots, period. In a discussion, they make it happen. So are we giving, are we giving Luke too much credit, and, and are we beating up Zach too much? Well, I don't think Zach deserves any, uh, any second guessing. I mean, he put together his team. The players, at the end of the day, have to go out and make the putts. Mm. That's the key. That's, is, the, yeah. that's the biggest momentum shifter in it the is. game. It's Justin, making a putt. Justin Rose was the best putter of the 24 guys. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, don't get no, no disrespect. Justin Rose is, is is a good putter, but Justin Rose is not a great putter. Well, he's not Steve Stricker. I I only watched afternoon session because it was yeah. our morning, yeah. right? Uh, but I just saw the first two days the Europeans making a lot of putts, and yeah. the, the USA team uh, Cantley made a lot of good putts. Yeah. Uh, but we missed a lot, yeah. and and that's tough. I mean, yeah. I think that, uh, and it's we we quickly forget we crushed them two years ago yeah. on U.S. soil, and I don't think Padre Carrington deserved any blame. They just the Americans played great. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was basically kind of the same captaincy group that was at Whistling Straight. Yeah. So, I think everybody rallied around Zach, and Zach's a world class human being. Oh, I he mean, is, he's yeah. just the best. Mm -hmm. So. so I think yes. What's think, that? Forty? He's probably forty-seven. Okay, so he's he's getting yeah. close. He's in that tough window in there yeah. right now. He's yeah. in that tough window. I'll tell you, he'll do well he's out here. He's gonna do well out here. Yeah, he is. Hey, thanks for your time. You bet, really appreciate yeah. you coming out here. Yeah. All right. Good luck. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you.